Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, July 24th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, no time is wasted blaming conservative America for another gun-free zone murder. And author Jim Mars shares his research on population control. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're in a savage toe-to-toe -to -toe war, and guess what? We've got some good blows in with the truth, fighting with two daggers in our hands, and the globalists are stumbling around bleeding all over the place right now. The problem is they're about to counter offense. I can tell you right now. You gotta get in there, and we gotta deal with them politically. We gotta sever their head politically and expose them for the murdering, ghoulish, organized crime, narcotics trafficking, child molesting, absolute scum of the earth, garbage filth that these maggot-infested demons are. To celebrate the birth of our country and give a big thanks to all the info warriors out there, we are now offering free shipping on every item shipped out of the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse. That's free shipping on all t-shirts, books, and DVDs. Free shipping on Molan Labe and 1776 belt buckles, which are also 25% off while supplies last. Free shipping on all of our InfoWarsLife.com nutraceuticals. If it's in the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse, it's shipping for free, all during the month of July. It's our way of saying thanks to the true heart and soul of this operation, who stand beside us and support us as we wage an info war for liberty and freedom for all. InfoWarsStore.com, free shipping for the month of July. Well, immediately in the wake of the Lafayette Theater shooting, we are seeing the left sharpening its claws for gun control. Quite funny, since that's not what we were hearing all last week when it was a Muslim shooter. Now, 59-year-old John Russell Hauser has been identified as the shooter in this, and we are seeing people rushing to Twitter, demanding that because of that, all white men must be disarmed, uh, even though white people are responsible for just 2.5% of all gun crime in major cities like New York. Now, you can just take a look at all of the tweets there. Mass shooters are always alone white males. Prohibit gun sales to light lone white men only. Um, you know, it goes on and on. Everyone, that's the whole thing, except for white guys. They're the only ones that can not have guns. Once again, time has proven that white people with guns are the biggest threat to American citizens. But this logic is, of course, insane, because as we pointed out time and time again, people ignore the other gun crime that's out there when they want to grab the guns. The anti-gun people ignore the fact that black people are responsible for over half of the homicides in the United States, even though they only make up 13% of the population. In major cities like New York, um, African Americans comprise over 70% of shooting arrests. Hispanics comprise about 25%. Whites there in New York City, 2.5%. And, you know, people are constantly ignoring those facts, ignoring the fact that every weekend in Chicago, 40 people are shot. No one ever wants to talk about that. Uh, a BuzzFeed news editor, of course, because they are part of the establishment media now, immediately rushed to, for gun control. And uh, one respondent remarked, if you were in that theater, you might have a different perspective right about now. Take guns from law abiders. Great idea. And that's what we're pointing out again and again, is that these type of things happen in gun-free zones. But it's also kind of funny uh, going again with the hypocrisy of these anti-gunners, another leftist journalist said, it would be funny if all gun rights people got shot dead. So it's really funny how people are anti-gun until they want to threaten to shoot up people that disagree with their ideology. And of course, immediately in the aftermath, um, we have the corporate media linking the Louisiana shooter to the Tea Party because he apparently created an account on Tea Party Nation website. Uh, but they also haven't really pointed out that he's got a manifesto. 
Isn't it funny how these guys always have a manifesto and his little manifesto online, he admits to being an Obama supporter. He liked Obama's plans. He liked his, uh, you know, his policies. So not your average Tea Party member there. Uh, but of course, as Paul Joseph Watson points out, the left is not going to blame all Muslims for the Chattanooga shooting. They did not call for gun control. I mean, really, they did not call for gun control after the Marines were shot. The president didn't even put flags at half mast and wouldn't even dare utter the words Islamic extremism because that does not fit the agenda. Now, let's take a look at the way Alex Jones kind of broke this down for us today on the radio show. But this is how they can make a mountain out of molehill. Two people are dead. It's very tragic. Upwards of 100 people die a day on the highways. Are we saying banned cars? Two dead, six wounded, a gun-free zone. Well, Paul Watson has the article, Infowars.com. Don't blame all Muslims for Chattanooga, but blame all conservatives for theater shooting with no evidence yet that this guy was a Tea Partier. But Tea Partiers on record, Justice Department's own numbers, conservative libertarian people have the lowest crime rates out there in studies and the highest level of charitable giving. Look it up. Just type conservatives, libertarians, highest level of charity study. Type in uh, Tea Party, lowest crime rate. It is a fact. People self-identifying as conservative, our constitutionalist, our libertarian have the lowest crime rate. But if you watch mainstream dinosaur media, then they're not telling women to hold, have special devices so that they can pee standing up or telling women to show they're feminists by having green or purple underarm hair. By the way, we give me the New York Times and Yahoo. People don't believe me when I mentioned it yesterday. This is the top stories. Have green underarm hair. Pee standing up if you're a woman. White men are inherently bad. Whites are criminals. Whites are dangerous. And, and you sit there, MTV, New York Times, MSNBC. It is crazy town. And then out of 330 million people, there's just crime and murder going on uh, you know, by the hundreds every day because that's what's always happened. Overall crime since 92 is down 61%, according to Professor Lott. The Justice Department says 51. Whatever. Let's just say 51% drop. 51% drop since 1992. And you would believe there is a insane epidemic of people swinging from chandeliers shooting everybody. And the only place that's happening is the south side of Chicago, New York, D.C., as the bad areas of Dallas, Houston. I mean, every major city has bad areas where there's a bunch of drug dealers and criminals and all the rest of it. And that's what goes on in those areas. And the criminals gravitate to those areas because they can get away with it. They can then go out of the crime area, rob the middle class, rob the suburbs, rob working class folks, and then come right back into their warrants. And that's what's going on. And there's, you go to those neighborhoods, there's white scum, there's black scum, there's Hispanic scum, they're all scum in there feeding on good people and poor people that live in those areas. And scum all acts just the same. They just got different colored skin. And so, I mean, I was there this morning and I watched for like 30 minutes and then I came back and watched another 30 minutes. I was on the elliptical for like 25 and I was halfway watching it while I was lifting weights. Then I, I watched it for another 30 minutes getting ready. And, and, they, and just, I never saw any information, just the police acting like it was the end of the world, the governor acting like it was the end of the world, everyone just acting like it's this giant, spectacular theater event. I mean, if a chemical plant blows up and kills 50 people, it's on the news for a couple hours. If there's a highway pileup and it kills 100 people, it's hardly even in the news. If, if bad stuff gets in the water you know, and it kills 14 people, it's not even in the news. But if two people get shot in a theater, oh my gosh, we're defenseless in a theater, a shooter could pop up any minute and kill us, it's creating the perception that imminent death could happen at any minute. And, and why is a Republican governor playing along with this in Lafayette, Louisiana? What is he doing within hours of it in breathless press conferences? It's bizarre. But it shows how mainstream media has lost its credibility. 
it's falling apart, its ratings are declining steadily, but still it can put on a hoax, still it can make something like this the top story. So there it is, we see this agenda play out again and again. The only time we are gonna hear these calls for gun control is when the suspect is the stereotypical white male because that fits the agenda of right-wing extremists. Every time we see a Muslim going on a shooting spree, the left basically falls all over itself to blame it on uh, the Quran, or any attempts that you would have to blame it on the Quran or, or, or uh, religion. They want to say that you're being racist. So that standard is, is not applied the other way. It's not racist to say all white people need to have their guns taken away. Paul Joseph Watson points out uh, that in the aftermath of the Boston bombings, the news outlets like Salon, they were insisting that all Muslims need not apologize for the bloodshed there. But of course, that's not what happened after Charleston uh, or uh, Chattanooga as well. Um, he also points out that that call was strangely absent when at least 14 people were killed after an incredible 82 shootings over the July 4th weekend in Chicago alone. Uh, so, I mean, we see this hypocrisy again and again, but now we have one more anti-gun fantasy. Um, this is coming from Raf Sanchez. He's a writer for The Telegraph, and he suggests that more ISIS terrorism in the United States could be the answer to the end of the Second Amendment. So he's actually making the argument that if we have some more ISIS extremists shooting up uh, recruitment centers and everything, that that will make people see that this is a national crisis and that we need to give away our guns. I mean, <laughs> is that not absolute fantasy there? It does not even make sense. Have more ISIS terrorists shooting places up so then America will go, okay, you're right, let's give up our guns because again, why, let's unarm the people who are using their Second Amendment to protect themselves from criminals. My goodness. And of course, like we keep pointing out, those recruitment centers are still unarmed, even though they are receiving active threats. Now, there was an unspecified shooting threat that came just one week after the Chattanooga shooting. Uh, Joe Biggs reported on this breaking news earlier this morning. And now that has been confirmed that the Tampa recruiting offices were evacuated due to the shooting threat. We want to go ahead and say thank you to our noble info warriors there on the ground who were able to get us in these photos confirming that Tampa recruiting offices were evacuated. Joe Biggs made calls to several of those recruiting centers and you can see a lot of the photos there that they were closed for the day. If you'll scroll down, you can see the empty offices there. So Joe Biggs was on the Alex Jones show today with an update. Today I actually got some information from a friend in Georgia. Now he, his son lives in Tampa, Florida. He roommates with a re recruiter at one of the local stations in that area. And he has given us information saying that they have been told to evacuate. Now Don Salazar and myself have both called numerous recruiting stations without any answers. The phone will ring and or go to a recorded statement at that point. Now we have confirmed, though, we actually have a listener who has gone down to the numerous recruiting centers in Tampa, has taken pictures of empty offices. So this is happening due to a threat that they got for a shooter that could possibly happen. Now, earlier in the week, I spoke to a recruiter in South Austin who said that some of the offices in Las Vegas and Florida were getting threats of another attack. Now, this comes a week after the shooting in Chattanooga that left numerous Marines and a Navy sailor dead. So we've got to take this seriously, and I want people in that area, you know, to be on watch. And if you can, if you know anybody in those areas, call them, make sure they're okay, find out what's going on, and send us some tips. Now, frankly, I'm sick and tired of talking about mass shootings. Do I think it's okay that someone went and shot up a movie theater or that we're having to hear about this again? Absolutely not. But we have to, because we're the only people that are gonna push back against this anti-gun agenda. The only people that are gonna expose what this is really all about to take the guns away from Mr. and Mrs. America. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. This is the great gun debate. Why don't you listen to the anti-gunners in their own words? 
If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. We just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Enough. 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 Mayor Bloomberg, how you doing? Jason, I grew up in Brooklyn. In the spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? They may feel that it's part of... Uh, a romanticized culture. There's, there's, a, there's an aspect of this, a kind of Wild West, cowboy, dirty Harry aspect. There's also an aspect... So that's, they're macho that, men and they got to have a gun. Go ahead. Make my day. Anybody that wants to disarm me can drop dead. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear. Anybody that wants to make me unarmed and helpless, mm -hmm. people that want to literally create the proven places where more innocents are killed, called gun-free zones, mm -hmm. we're going to beat you. This we're going to vote you out of office yes. or suck on my machine gun. Yes. That's why you're going to fail, and the establishment knows, no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. Guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. I believe that as Americans, we have a right to arm ourselves against criminals, but we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. The United States military is not out to get us. And I think that's a healthy thing to question your government. I don't think it's particularly healthy uh, to question the military. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. I don't want that man to have a gun. I wouldn't feel comfortable having an argument with him mm. in his home. Challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match, show up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally, and pop him. I'd love to see that. <laughs> in uniform. <laughs> you don't have that much time to take away Americans' guns, declare martial law, and put hardworking Americans in FEMA camps. If you're going to do that, you better, better get, get started. You better get started. <laughs> Coming up, David Knight will be joining me in studio to talk about a new report coming out of the Department of Defense warning about the future of warfare, and it predicts drones and super soldiers are going to be manning the skies and on the battlefield, and that is an insane report. But first, the amazing journalist and author Jim Mars will be joining me in studio to discuss his new book, Population Control, and how it's the corporatocracy that's the real beast. Stick around. The brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. Boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from them, hdfirearms.com, that's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle, 
you have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. This is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver because that's what's traceable. That's what's serialized and that's what the, the federal government's after. But uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you got to do is your own research and you can find out how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore. It's old, something like that. You can throw it on this. You basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that. Go look at the third party reviews. Tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius, that's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. Uh, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of, is a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long-range shooting, marksmanship type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get a head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and I think things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18-inch barrel. You don't have to get the 22-inch barrel. You don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16-inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type, you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there. And any configuration you might want on your rifle, they're, they're able to do that. And they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. <gasps> This is your new alien overlord, your new robot overlord here. This is, <laughs> would you be afraid of this on the battlefield? <laughs> Welcome back. Joining me in studio now is journalist and author, Jim Mars. Welcome. We're here to talk about your book, Population Control, How Corporate Owners Are Killing Us. Yeah, pretty serious topic, uh, Leanne. Uh, and I really encourage people to take a look at this, not, not just because it's my book and I want to sell a book. I want people to understand that uh, the discussion has gone past politics and it's gone past even philosophies. Uh, but we're into self-defense now. Right. Uh, because if you listen to the words of the... Uh, ruling elite, the oligarchy, the Illuminati, the uh, uh, Occupy calls them the 1%. I say it's more like one-tenth of 1%. <clears throat> but they really make no bones about the fact that they want to reduce the human population. Mm. And they're doing it. Uh, it's interesting because uh, most of these people uh, are eugenicists. They accept and have bought into the eugenics movement, which is, let's improve the human race. And uh, if your skin color or your bone structure or your IQ doesn't measure up to their idea of, uh, of a Superman, then they would just as soon see you go away. Uh, in fact, in the 1930s in the United States, uh, most states had sterilization laws. And if you didn't come up to their standards, I mean, you could be involuntarily sterilized. Uh, in Germany, they picked up on that and they carried it to its logical extremes and we had World War II and the Holocaust. Yeah, they said we got some groups of people here we don't like so we just kill them. And so eugenics kind of fell into disrepute there but these uh, people at the very top they still buy into this. They still feel like overpopulation is the basic pro underlying problem in the world mm -hmm. and they are willing to do anything and everything to try to do that and what they're doing is, and what I detail in my book, Population Control, 
is how they're using bad food and bad water and bad vaccines, bad air uh, to uh, basically turn us into a death culture, Mm -hmm. a culture that is dedicated more towards death than life. Uh, And amazingly enough, these people are not stupid. So, uh, you know, people say, well, why would they want to kill off their own populations and their own consumers? Well, they want to trim it. And by trimming it, they get rid of some of the very young, the very old, the, the weakest segments of society. And then the people in the middle, they, they sicken them. Mm-hmm. They become ill. And then they have to go see the doctor more frequently. And the doctors prescri- prescribe more medicines, more pills, more drugs. And uh, so it's an amazing situation because as they cull the human population, they're actually profiting from it. Uh, because of their ownership of these major international corporations. And uh, Leanne, let me quick point out, I'm not necessarily just against all corporate life. I mean, you know, let's face it, there's so many corporations. uh, And most of the people who work for a corporation who sit in the little cubicles or drive the trucks or work on the production lines, these are all perfectly good people. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that some of the officers, presidents, vice presidents, uh, these are sharp, educated, caring people, uh, probably have a Harvard business degree, mm-hmm. but they're not in charge. It's the, it's the CEO, it's the board chairman, it's one of the uh, directors or majority stockholder. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have the idea that uh, to be a majority stockholder, you have to have 51% or more of the stock of a company. But this isn't really true. If you only have uh, 5% of the stock of a big corporation, but no one else has more than, say, 4%, you're the majority stockholder, and what you say goes. And it's these people, that's who I'm talking about, who make the decisions and set the policies. And uh, I think uh, what I'm talking about is you'll have a guy at the top of the pyramid, uh, and he's made aware that some of the ingredients of their food product, for example, uh, is actually harmful and will debilitate the consumer, make them sick, and may even eventually kill them. Well, that's okay for him because he wants the population reduced. So he tells the the president, the vice presidents, that this is okay, this is good, it's been tested, mm-hmm. we know, and then they pass that down, and everybody in the organization really thinks that they're really doing good. Right, they've got to engage in that corporate spin. Exactly, I, and I think we've seen this in the issue of fluoride. Sodium fluoride, uh, before World War II, was sold as a rat poison. Uh, but then the Germans found out that you could put just a little bit of this poison uh, in the water supply, and it would numb down a drinker and make him docile. And, and so they put it in the water of their concentration camps. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very much like... People drink alcohol. Alcohol is a poison. You drink it strong enough, quick enough, it will kill you. Correct. But they water it down and they mix it up and put some flavoring in it, and then you get a little buzz. Well, it's the same thing with fluoride. And so now, though, what we have is we have no non-medical people in these cities dumping sodium fluoride into the water supply so that everybody, man, women, children, are all getting this cumulative poison that can eventually work on your uh, immunization system. And it's basically involuntary medication. Correct. Yeah, we've made that argument many times. People say, well, why would they do that? It's going to affect them too and their kids. No, they, they've got water filters. They're eating the organic food. They're not over at the grocery store. You know, they've <laughs> exactly. they're eating local. And, and well, so what, what do you think is the biggest corporate threat? I mean, we've got... Uh, the vaccine industry. We've got the g- genetically modified foods. Here we have Congress just passed the uh, Orwellian Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act of 2015, which actually will ban states from requiring GMO food labeling. So it's just totally going past. And, and what, what was the name of that again? <laughs> I, no, here's Orwellian. Your, here's your, here, yeah, really. Right. Here's some Orwellian newspeak. Yeah, this. well, we know they like to name it the exact opposite. It's called the Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act of 2015. The Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act that prevents you from knowing if you're getting GMO uh, products. Right. Uh, that's, that's just beyond the beyond. 
Why don't they call it the No GMO Act? Right. You well, know. Yeah, it's just no freedom. So, so corporates. So the corporate. I mean, what should we really be worried about here? We got the CDC suggesting mothers delay breastfeeding to enhance their vaccines because the mother's milk will, uh, you know, try to fight off the the vaccine because it's alive. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's insane to me. The CDC is now telling moms you know, to delay that or the first thing they want to give people who are de well, depressed is. Unfortunately, killed. this is an appeal to authority. Okay. Which is one of the oldest tricks in the book when you're having a debate or any kind of argument, uh, you appeal to authority. Well, you know, they've got all, they say, yeah, but we've got these studies that show that vaccines are perfectly safe and harmless. You know, well, wait a minute. Uh, you find out that all these studies that show that they're harmless have been done by the very people who manufacture the vaccines. Right. And in fact, there are now whistleblowers out in the public saying that they have fudged the numbers. They have fudged the studies. The studies have been slanted and misreported. And that's by the people that are actually involved in it. Um, it, it's really incredible. And of course, they don't talk about the vaccine injury compensation program, which right. was passed by Congress back in the uh, mid eighties. Uh, and, uh, that, uh, absolves the pharmaceutical corporations right. from any liability. They're free and, to do whatever they, they wish. And, and they say it's safe, but between now and between then and now, They've paid out over $3 billion to families whose children have been harmed by vaccines. People need to find out what they're doing to us so you can take countermeasures, so you can protect your family, your loved ones, uh, because what you don't know can hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, definitely your book is going to be filled with a lot of really important information. Uh, and I know you're going to be co-hosting with David Knight next week, so that'll be very interesting. Uh, but everyone needs to stick around because we are going to have part two of this interview. I really want to talk to you about the Disclosure Project and why so many people now are talking about not contacting alien life form out there. And we got the Vatican coming out and talking about this planetary council. What are they preparing us for? So definitely you got to wait till next week to see all that. But stick around. Thank you, Jim Mars. To celebrate the birth of our country and give a big thanks to all the info warriors out there, we are now offering free shipping on every item shipped out of the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse. That's free shipping on all t-shirts, books, and DVDs. Free shipping on Molan Labe and 1776 belt buckles, which are also 25% off while supplies last. Free shipping on all of our InfoWarsLife.com nutraceuticals. If it's in the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse, it's shipping for free, all during the month of July. It's our way of saying thanks to the true heart and soul of this operation, who stand beside us and support us as we wage an info war for liberty and freedom for all. InfoWarsStore.com, free shipping for the month of July. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. 
another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome back. Well, according to a new report that's predicting the coming future of warfare, we can expect to see robots patrolling the skies and an army of super soldiers on the battlefield. Now, this report visualizing the tactical ground battlefield in the year 2050 is the result of a workshop that was held uh, between the U.S. Defense Department, Army Research Lab, uh, the Institute for Defense Analysis, and a select number of other people there in academia. But they're not really talking about the kind of super soldiers we've seen DARPA working on. They're actually talking about humans that are physically augmented with enhanced capabilities, improving their uh, abilities there on the battleground. So, David, tell me a little bit more about this report. Absolutely, Leanne. What's very concerning about this is that this is not just a um, Terminator uh, type of thing. It's also augmented humans. They're getting into some very strange uh, tech that they believe is imminent, things like force fields. Wow. Uh, they're talking about, of course, directed energy weapons are nothing new. We have them now. Uh, they're also talking about elements. If you look at one section of this, where they're talking about how they see, communicate, understand, decide, these are elements that sound very familiar to us today when we look at the research that's been going on now for 15 years or more uh, with the geospatial uh, intelligence, with human domain analytics, with activity-based intelligence, where they're trying to analyze populations and take it down to the individuals. And they talk about that as well. Listen to some of the topics here. Augmented humans, automated decision-making and autonomous processes, misinformation as a weapon. Wow. Okay, that's what unconventional warfare is about, micro-targeting of individuals. And they're talking about, this isn't about targeting a building, targeting even a vehicle. This is about targeting the individual when they're talking about micro-targeting. So it's, it's micro-targeting in terms of uh, kinetic actions as well as in terms of psychological actions, in terms of propaganda, that sort of thing. Cognitive modeling of the opponent. And that's where all of this feeds into that we see with Jade Helm. They want cognitive modeling of the opponent. In order to do that, they need to know as much as possible about everyone and everything. They put the, they data mine this, and then they massage the data to see who pops up. This is one of the things that makes it so dangerous because when they do this kind of mass collection of data, data mining and analysis, their analysis can create false positives. They can finger someone who's not really doing anything or not even planning to do anything, okay? That's the whole idea of pre-crime is to get these people before they do something. That's what we saw with Wesley Clark. That's what we see now uh, with uh, Mike McCall's bill trying to get home, uh, FEMA involved in this, analyzing, putting out grants, analyzing it to see who might become 
a uh, violent extremist, and then, of course, Wesley Clark suggests maybe we ought to incarcerate them. Perhaps that's why they've got FEMA running the grants under Homeland Security. But they also talk about things like swarms and teams. It's very, very distressing. Let me read you some of the things that they are talking about with the um, augmented humans. They say the battlefield of the future will be populated by fewer humans, but these humans would be physically, mentally augmented with enhanced capabilities and improve their ability to sense their environment, so forth and so on. Now, they're talking about how they think this is very reasonable. This is an extension of current trends. They say that uh, great progress has been made in recent years. And of course, none of us really know how great that progress right. has been because that's a secret. But great progress has been made in enhancing vision, hearing, and cognitive skills. And there's been a growing acceptance of implants because that's one of the ways they're going to do this. Now they say the enhanced humans themselves will become high value targets on the battlefield. How are they going to, how are they going to defend against that? Well, they said perhaps other uh, humans and machines will try to overcome them in swarms and that sort of thing. They say they'll be engineered to use less food, less water. They will likely be less affected by adverse environmental conditions that are hostile for humans, like radiation, chemical weapons, biological agents, other area denial techniques, area denial techniques, like biological weapons. Okay, yeah. so basically what they're doing is you've got the same time, you've got the CDC and these other organizations going out there importing deadly bacteria, they call them select agents, okay? And then increasing their function, they call that, uh, uh, you know, uh, putting all this stuff together, and we've already seen how in, uh, in the Tulane National Primate Lab, how that has happened, how that's gotten out of the biosafety level three lab into the environment. This is what's very concerning about that. There are over 200 biosafety level three, level four labs throughout the country, and over 100 of them have had serious accidents. So this is the kind of stuff that the Pentagon is working on. True sci-fi uh, situations where they're going to engineer, genetically engineer humans to be able to withstand radiation, to be able to withstand diseases that they're going to uh, release into the, uh, in the population with gain of function, making them easier to transmit, uh, more deadly once they are transmitted, all of these things are very concerning. And Leanne, when I look at this, of course, there's also the aspects of automated decision-making where, uh, where the automated uh, machinery, the automated drones, the automated uh, weaponry on the battlefield can make its own decisions without any human input. That is very, very dangerous, the idea of killer robots. Right. But all of this together, when we look at everything that, that DARPA and the Defense Department is doing, and of course, it's interesting that this is being reported on uh, from Australia. It wasn't an American uh, paper that picked this stuff up. We need to look at this, and we need to think about the, the existential threat to the human race that the Department of Defense presents, because right. DARPA is just out of control in so many different ways. And even if we just go back to the examples I gave about uh, bioengineering and their research on that, that alone, is extremely troubling, and especially the accidents that they've had recently shipping live anthrax and so forth and so on. They're, mix, they're messing with very dangerous technologies. And as we see with all these different technologies, whether it's nanotechnology or nuclear technology or biological technology, artificial intelligence, all of these things have the capability of getting out of control. Absolutely. And, and extinguishing, a, you know, gigadeth, essentially, if it doesn't extinguish uh, most of the people, uh, <laughs> billions of people, as Hugo de Garris has talked about, just with artificial intelligence. But of course, all those technologies have that capability. Absolutely, and we see pioneers and researchers in the field of AI warning about this and saying, let's be ethical about this because they can see uh, the government and DARPA taking this research and that it's going to get ahead of us. And they're mm -hmm. really, you know, being, uh, speaking out loud about this, the potentiality for all of this. Um, when you look at movies like Jurassic Park, I mean, that, that's essentially the main theme is that, mm -hmm. you know, just because you can build something like this doesn't mean that you should. Right. And the idea that, uh, as, as Michael Crichton talked about it, thin intelligence, that they see very narrowly, they don't see the surround, they don't understand the consequences of what they're doing, they're focused simply on this technical problem without thinking about the consequences and making themselves servants of some people who really don't have any ethics. I mean, why should we be developing situations like, over and over again, we have seen the U.S. military predominantly creating these things 
creating these new technologies, and then of course that gets uh, turned over to the other side. Right. Uh, Tony Stark wise, if you want to yeah. go back more movie analogies, but basically they 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 supply weapons to both sides. They're either leaked or they're sold to the other side. So they're constantly and feverishly and exponentially creating the threats to all of us. It's absolutely amazing to see something like this, to see what they're looking at just 30 years out. It's just right. unbelievable. Right, absolutely. And and it, there was another story where Google was wanting a piece of air traffic control for drones. Uh, they're working with a bunch of other uh, tech companies to be able to patrol the skies because of course, they know be the Google. future will be drones. Yeah. Right. And Google, Google has bought, when they had the uh, robotics contest with DARPA, Google went out and bought all of the robotics companies that looked promising in that uh, DARPA contest. So by the time they actually had the trials, uh, you know, it wasn't that hard for them to evaluate who it was. And of course, they have essentially unlimited amounts of money. So they went out and bought all those companies, also buying uh, AI companies like uh, Deep Thought and others. Yeah, it's just all of these technologies are coming together with Google, trying to control our transportation. That is a military attack on our population. Right. When the government or when Google or when Uber wants to take over our population and control it centrally by one or two corporations, by the government limiting our, our movements, that is a strategic military move. That is something that is, is set up to take down our basic freedoms of being able to travel around. We should be very concerned about this corporate involvement, especially Google, the way they have implanted themselves oh. now in the military industrial complex. They're much farther ahead of the game than we can even fathom. Well, David, I'm really excited to see what happens when you actually dig a little further into this because, I mean, this, yeah, this, this just, just came, came out, out today, so I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot about it next week when you are uh, in the chair for the Alex Jones radio show, so that'll be really interesting. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> thank you. on that. Well, stick around because coming up, I'm going to have another interview with Theo Pymans. He is an author and researcher, and we are going to be speaking about occult circles throughout the centuries and across Europe and how they've been playing with technology as well. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. My guest today is author and researcher Theo Pymans. His publications include his book, Free Energy Pioneer, John Worrell Keeley, as well as he has an upcoming publication called The Real Society, and he is a former editor of Blend Magazine. Now, if you are interested in the occult history of technology, I highly recommend this book. We've got him on the show. So, Theo, welcome to the show. Now, please talk to us a little bit about some of the occult circles, uh, you know, throughout the centuries across Europe and the world. 
and a little bit about you know how we might see their influence sprinkled throughout society today. Well, first of all, uh, pleased uh, that you have me on your on your show. And well, in the nineteenth century, and the nineteenth century was very formative uh, to the way our society has become. And coinciding, or not, perhaps, in the 19th century, we see the advent of a number of occult orders and secret societies who became very influential. Now, we can even see that influence today, although a lot of us, we don't actually realize it because we are laymen. But if we look slightly behind the way things are today, and if we know what and where to look for, we see little hints, we see symbols, we see all kinds of clues peppered and left behind by these secret societies and occult orders for their uh, followers and for the subsequent generations. And what we see then is that, well, a large part of the way society is today has been not only predicted by these occult orders, but also steered and oftentimes with dire consequences. And we must also uh, keep in mind that this new term that you know is sometimes floating around which i find very interesting which is called the breakaway civilization we must realize that the breaking away of an alternative civilization started much earlier than is usually thought of and originated from these secret societies and occult orders and so what would they discuss at some of their meetings what were they really interested in they were interested in man well, basically, they were interested in, in man, and, and uh, that means certain representatives of man, not the entirety of mankind, but certain elite members of man, to become like God-man. Uh, we see that, for instance, in a Victorian novel of, uh, by an author named Doberlitten. He wrote a novel in 1871, and the novel is called The Coming Race, and it describes some kind of underground race of humanoid beings superior to us men, and they harness this incredible energy force, which is called Vril. They would also discuss uh, other unseen energetic forces like the Odilic force, like mesmerism. They would discuss ectoplasm. They would uh, hold seances to talk not only with the spirits of their deceased ancestors, but also to contact extraterrestrial intelligences on other planets. Now, all this was discussed in the 19th century. People often have... Um, a perception of occultism in the 19th century that is that it was all some kind of old-fashioned outmoded uh, affair but it was not you would be amazed and astounded what those people uh, did in these avant-garde circles the kind of experiments that they conducted it was truly an era of unprecedented discovery and much of what the occult world is into today still rests upon what was discovered back then and we must also not forget that if you look at, say, for instance, the UFO phenomenon, the first time that there were large waves of unexplained aerial phenomena and unexplained uh, flying objects was in the 19th century. So we see an advent of uh, technology. We see an upsurge in uh, strange parts of occultism. We see um, the proto-UFO phenomenon really taking off. Now, what do all these strains mean when you combine them together? We dream of traveling to the stars, but as far as we know, we don't have uh, the technical capability of traveling to, uh, to the stars. Now, I always say that um, if there is a faster than light drive, and if you, need to, if you wanted to look uh, in, in man's history, in our history, where uh, such a device might have been um, uh, invented, I always say go back to the 19th century and start there and then proceed to the 1930s. Because in that time frame, we see Einstein with his fabulous theories and, and, and theorems. We see a lot of scientists with, with truly incredible breakthroughs. In fact, even today, I had a discussion with people, and we were of the opinion that man back then seemed to be smarter than we are now, because now we are surrounded with all this technology. I mean, I can Skype you, you can Skype me, we can do this interview. But then again, nobody actually knows how this technology actually works. And if it breaks down, we can't even repair it. We have to go to the store and buy new stuff. So in fact, yes, our technology is uh, maybe better than it was, let's say different than it was then in the 19th century, but at the same time, it makes us more, uh, it makes us more as a slave. So I think um, coming back to what, what I said previously, in the 19th century, these people had incredible ideas, they had incredible visions, 
but they simply lacked the tools and the means. But what they also had, and that, that is the, also one of the functions of occult orders, they had patience. They could uh, plot lines over generations. Uh, and that is one of the aims and the functions of an order, to pass forward the torch, to keep a body of knowledge uh, incorruptible and uh, to protect it and to pass it onward to the next generation or at least to the representatives of the next generation who they deem are uh, worthy of, of uh, receiving that body of knowledge. And um, well, in there, you, you see now that currently some, some strains of our technology are beginning to realize what those people in the 19th century actually thought of. So this is interesting. There were members like a uh, 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 famous British scientist, Crookes, from, from England. He was a very famous uh, British scientist. In America, we have, since um, um, American society does not know nobility, but they do know uh, very rich tycoons. There was John Jacob Astor, who died on the Titanic. We had a wealthy industrialist in Germany, uh, Karl Kellner, who uh, had even a, a number of patents on his name. So we see that the most uh, influential members of the esoteric orders belong to the upper echelons in uh, society. Mm, now, we just have just a few more minutes left, so can you briefly tell us about what you've got coming up? Because it, uh, you are researching almost this vril that you mentioned. Uh, so briefly yes. tell us about what you've got coming up. I have been researching uh, the most secret German order that has ever been into existence, uh, which is called the Vril Society, for 30 years now. And finally, I was able to, much to my, uh, uh, to my pleasantry, I was finally able to solve the mystery by gaining access to a secret archive with original documents. Uh, just recently, I went to uh, a place in Germany, which uh, was a castle, acquired by uh, the Dark Lord of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, which was his Dark Camelot, and which was to be his center of the world. And that's all part of my, uh, my research, and this will come out in, in the book that will be released in February next year. And there we will be reading what the Vril Society was really into. They were not into old magic like drawing pentagrams and mumbling to mumbo-jumbo demons. No, their brand of occultism was entirely strange, something we could almost compare to extraterrestrial technology, only in that uh, difference that it originated here uh, on Earth. Right, yeah, I, I recall reading about stuff like that, that the, um, Hitler was very interested in this extraterrestrial energy, and he sent people all across the globe, really, to come into contact uh, with that wisdom, I guess, that was out there spread across the Earth. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, Theo Pyman will definitely have you back for sure to talk about this. Well, that was all very interesting indeed. Now, we actually had Theo Pymans on the show because we're going to be doing a more in-depth report, getting into the occult history, uh, the technological occult history, and how the elite have been kind of steering uh, the direction of this technological future that we are beginning to see uh, built up all around us. You can sort of see that theme running its way all throughout the show tonight. So be sure to uh, stick around for that report. It's coming up next week, and it is going to be a doozy. Now, thank you all for tuning in with us tonight. And uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate that. You are definitely helping us reach as many people as possible, taking us to the next level. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription helps support this operation. You are the resistance by helping us. You're, we're able to bring you all the reports, the Alex Jones show, all of our movies, our eBooks. He's able to send us on all the trips and things like that and to be able to get people on to do these in-depth interviews with us. And of course, as always, that subscription can be shared with up to 20 people at the same time. And we surely appreciate you here at InfoWars, the whole team. Thanks you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here again Monday, 7 p.m. Central. To celebrate the birth of our country and give a big thanks to all the info warriors out there, we are now offering free shipping on every item shipped out of the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse. That's free shipping on all t-shirts, books, and DVDs. 
free shipping on Molan Labe and 1776 belt buckles, which are also 25% off while supplies last. Free shipping on all of our InfoWarsLife.com nutraceuticals. If it's in the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse, it's shipping for free all during the month of July. It's our way of saying thanks to the true heart and soul of this operation who stand beside us and support us. InfoWarsStore.com. Free shipping for the month of July. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.